In this 4-bit triple carry counter, we are using T flip flop to design. Since it is a 4-bit counter, I am using 4 T flip flops and how actually the connections will be. I am providing a clock signal to the first T flip flop and the next flip flops will be taking the clock signal from the previous T flip flop outputs. And parallelly we are taking the output Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 here. And reset signal is given to all the T flip flops to reset the output. Here T flip flops can be made from the negative edge trigger D flip flops and D flip flops are become the sub component of the T flip flop and T flip flop here we have used is the sub component of the ripple carry counter. So for this particular design we can we are using a top down design methodology. If you write the top down design methodology for this ripple carry counter it looks like this. Here is the ripple carry counter block. This is the top module. Under that we will be having four T flip flops and it is named as TFF0, TFF1, TFF2 and TFF3. And to use, to design the T, this T flip flop, we are using a D flip flop and an inverter. So you can observe the D flip flop over here. It is used to make it as T flip flop with an inverter. So in this particular figure, we can say the top module is a ripple carry counter and the, the sub module is a T flip flop. Sub module for that is D flip flop and an inverter gate. This will be called as a top down design methodology. So let us write the Verilog code for this. So here the name of the module is taken as ripple underscore carry underscore counter. This is the name of the module and any Verilog code starting with the keyword called module and then the module name. And we need to write the input and outputs of this particular counter. And here you can observe in the block diagram itself, the dotted box indicating a ripple carry counter. And outside the box, we are going to represent input and outputs of this block. Clock, reset, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 are the input and outputs. So I am taking it as Q, comma clock, comma reset. So next thing is to write the output declaration. Here Q is my output and it is a 4-bit vector. Why? Because we need to take Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. That's why I am representing it as a vector from 3 down to 0. If you write it as 3 down to 0 like this, it gives Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. And Q3 is the MSB and Q0 is LSB if you represent like this. And we need to declare the inputs also. The two inputs are clock and reset. So input clock comma reset. And now I need to write the logic how actually this ripple carry counter is going to work. For that I will be having a sub component or a sub module of T flip flop. Here four T flip flops are there. So I need to instantiate the T flip flop four times means the first thing is the first t flip flop let me uh, instantiate t underscore ff this is the module of the t flip flop which i have already written let me uh, show you that so the instance name of this t underscore ff is tff0 this tff0 is representing this particular device so within the braces i need to write how actually the input and output connections of this map with the ripple carry counter. Here you can clearly observe the first thing I have represented is Q and output of this particular uh, T flip flop is taken as Q0. That's why first we need to write Q0, comma clock, comma reset. First we need to write the output and then inputs. This is the order I have followed while writing the T flip flop very large code. That's why here while instantiating this particular module, I need to use the same order. So let me write the second T flip flop now. In the second T flip flop, output is Q1, Q of 1 and the input in place of clock will be having Q of 0. Here Q of 0 will be act as an input for the next T flip flop. That's why TFF1 will be having a, in place of clock will be having Q of 0. And then reset will be common, reset will be same for the second T flip flop also. And then the next two T flip flops can be instantiated like this with TFF2 and TFF3 as instant names. 
you can observe the output is q2 and input of the third t flip flop that is q of 1 and result is common similarly the fourth t flip flop is instantiated here and this module will be end with an end module now let us see how to write the t flip flop very log book here the t flip flop is designed using d flip flop so we need to instantiate d flip flop here so before that i need to write the module and the module name as t underscore ff you can recall t underscore ff is the module name i have used while instantiating the t flip flops in the ripple carry counter top module so then here the output is q and input is clock and input is reset that's why output is q input clock and resets are declared and here the one more thing is wire d i have declared d as wire why because in between the inverter and the d flip flop block i have one more connection over here that is d the output of the inverter is taken and connected to the input of d flip flop d flip flop will be having an one input d that is connected from the in inverter output that's why this connection should be represented as a wire so that i can map this d of d flip flop as output of the inverter with a name that's why while instantiating the d flip flop you can observe dff0 is the name i have given for this and the d flip flop uh, very log code what i have written in that i have followed output first that is q here is q that is taken as q itself in the t flip flop and then input d and then clock and then reset and i have one more not gate here i need to instantiate not gate the keyword for not gate is not uh, that is the very log primitive and n1 is the name and d comma q d is the output of this uh, inverter and q is the input this is t flip flop and here i have used d underscore ff and i need to write the code for that also so d flip flop again starting with the keyword module d underscore ff is the name of this module and q is the output clock and then reset output register Q. here why i have declared it as register means i am writing this in behavioral description while writing the behavioral description code i need to represent the output as register and then inputs are clock reset and d always at the positive edge of reset or negative edge of clock i am making this d flip flop to operate that's why when reset q is equal to zero output of the d flip flop will be zero else it is following the output is following the input d so this is the code to uh, write the d flip flop and using the d flip flop as an instance i am creating t flip flop and using the t flip flop i am writing a ripple carry counter okay so in the next video i am going to explain how to write the test bench to simulate this ripple carry counter